Vladimir Putin created the culture war. Wow, that's a statement. Does it sound outrageous? Does it sound bizarre? Have you decided to swipe up, flip the page or close the book yet? I wouldn't blame you. It sounds absolutely crazy. May I remind you however, how crazy the times we live in are. They're not just crazy, they're dangerous. There isn't just what could be the precursor to World War III happening in Europe's back door. There's an information war that has been running at full steam for years. We're all losing. Liberals and conservatives together are losing to outside forces. They are driving us apart by creating the atmosphere for our heads to clash violently. The they, I'm referring to as Putin, and everyone working with, or under him. In this essay I'm going to bring up very touchy subjects so prepare your pitchforks and underpants. I should correct myself. I shouldn't say Putin created the culture war, I should say he contracted it. Who I believe is the mastermind behind the culture war is Alexander Dugin. Google him, listen to his rhetoric. It's fascinating. I have come to a conclusion that it's made to exhaust the mind. I may have found its pattern. Once you see it, it's hard to unsee. That's what I hope to convey with this essay. I'm going to go down a list of topics that of late have become impossible to argue intelligibly. First, I'm going to lay out the general pattern, then topic by topic I'll explain how they're being made impossible to have a conversation about. These conversations aren't just impossible to have in public, but also in private. We're being put in pocketed tribes. We're being fenced off from each other. We're being made to hate what's on the other side. Even though, we still have so much in common. Why? What purpose does this serve Putin? It'll keep us from being able to fight the war he's about to wage in Europe. If you're paying attention, he has a narrative for us. He speaks of the West a certain way, and people believe him. I don't just mean the citizens of Russia, I mean people who live among us believe his rhetoric. More people than at first obvious. I'm going to make myself clear. There are people, real people, walking around spreading lies. They may be super famous, or your local influencer you've been watching for years. They only have 50k followers but, they're so down to earth, I love them so much. They may even be your best friend. This espionage runs deep. We're still learning of its complexities. It is very complex, and sophisticated. The FSB is an organization that evolved from the KGB. If you don't know the KGB was the Soviet intelligence service. They're infamous to this day. Russians seem to be very good at this sort of thing. Not just spying but manipulating. What I have found is, it's like a verbal sleight of hand. However, it encompasses more than just words. I heard a news pundit recently call it a form of art. It's being exposed however, but only because we have become aware of Putin's malintent. Otherwise I assume we would have fallen fully victim to it. Abortion. When you think of an abortion what is it you imagine? Is it a collection of cells that can't be seen with the naked eye? Are these cells being purged from an unready woman who may be, a rape and or incest victim, who may also be a minor? Do you see a couple who may not be ready to bring a child into the world? Do you think of complications that could arise during a pregnancy that may necessitate such a course of action? To be honest, that's what I imagine. I myself don't believe it's fair to force a woman to give birth irrespective to the circumstances. You know what's interesting? The vast majority of people in the Western world agree with me. Is that a more shocking statement than you were anticipating? It's true, most Republicans in the United States and most conservatives in Canada believe a woman has at least the right to an abortion if her life is in danger. You wouldn't get that impression from reading the New York Times on the subject. The most leftist newspaper in the world. It's true that there is a state that seems to fully ban abortions, Tennessee. However, it seems many publications fail to let their readers know something. Most of the capitals of the states that opted to implement more restrictive abortion laws retain the right to abortions to save the mother's life, at least. A few of the capitals retain the exception on rape and incest. The only outlier is Tennessee, how long that will last will be determined in the next state election, or as of this writing the 2022 midterms. Why is it do you think? that newspapers like the New York Times decided to misrepresent the information. Perhaps it's solely to present their ideological enemies in the most dreadful light. Perhaps, they don't see that misrepresenting information, leaves one open to criticism later. I don't know if I can believe that. Why would a writer leave themselves open to someone with opposing views? 
it seems almost done deliberately to enrage their readers and enrage those who oppose their views. I almost expected the updated abortion law map from the Washington Post, to read in a way, to suggest that every state in the union has abortion legal. However, what I found was what seems an accurate picture of the situation. The states that enacted the trigger law are shown in red, meaning abortion is banned or mostly banned. Why is it that the New York Times and The Guardian along with a few other major newspapers differ from what the Washington Post reports? The New York Times suggests that the states that enacted the trigger law have abortion outright banned. You're probably thinking whoop de doo so what, newspapers have biases. That's nothing new. You're right. What's new is social media sound bites and infographics. What I've been seeing is on social media platforms, particularly Twitter and TikTok, these topics are the subjects of many posts. They misrepresent information, then are bummed with hate comments spouting off disgusting rhetoric or pointing out the missing information. I don't want to say millions of these posts are made per day. So I'll say thousands. Then thousands more comments are posted. Whether it's a quote from a Republican or someone that doesn't fit the bill, they're misquoted, or summarized out of context. The comment sections are filled with people arguing the issue. It is becoming apparent and reported that many commenters are from spam accounts. And guess where many seem to originate from? You guessed it, Russia. Not only are the comments section filled with espionage bots which post hateful rhetoric, the accounts making the posts are probably owned by espionage artists. Real people who live among us. Cough, Alex Jones. Cough cough, Ibram X. Kendi. Whether their post is liberal or conservative, if it misrepresents information, there is a high chance that an espionage artist is behind it. The purpose is to sow division. They're not trying to inform you. They're not trying to convert you. They're trying to enrage you. The comment section is filled with spam bots who seem to concur with or completely oppose the post's topic. These spam accounts commenting their hateful garbage are there to make you believe that the world is filled with hateful people. Particularly, you're part of the world. When I say you're part of the world, I mean it. The labyrinth of espionage is so widespread that there are agents locally spreading lies on social media across the globe. Remember this isn't just a problem from the left-wing ideology. The left and right are being played off each other. There are agents on both sides sparking then fanning flames. Just like how the New York Times misrepresents the abortion map. Social media posts that seem to be anti-abortion, claim that full-grown babies are being aborted en masse. Perhaps you can't hold a social media post to the same pedestal as a newspaper. However, if the newspaper is found out to be lying, a vulnerable social media user may ask why. Perhaps they are aborting fully grown babies, otherwise why would they lie? I understand this is a bit of a stretch, but not everyone has critical thinking skills. Particularly, teenagers and young adults. The problem with the young is, they're stupid. That's why they go to school, to get smart. Espionage artists prey on the youth of societies. Have you heard of the woke mob wreaking havoc in your school district? If not, ask the tenured teacher in your life about it. Have you heard of Andrew Tate? Ask your teenage son who may have been saying rude things to girls at school. Before I finish with this segment, I want to ask you something, you should ask yourself. You should also ask your close friends who won't lynch you for it. If you were pregnant at 7 months, there isn't any issues with the baby, you're healthy, you have a supportive partner, the child wasn't conceived from incest or rape, and your income stream is enough to support you and your child. Is it right to abort just because you don't want the child? That's a tough question, many people in healthy situations know they don't want a child before the bump even shows, but to wait 7 months or more before making the abortion decision. Is it right? Asking this question has been made impossible, you will be paraded as a monster, or shunned to your wicked state, where only monsters lie. Is that right? To me it's a rational question to ask. The problem is, those who ask those questions in a public forum also say very horrible disgusting things. This ties the rational question to the disgusting rhetoric. This scares an innocent, with good intentions from being seen as a monster. That is by design. One last thing. If a woman desires not to have an abortion, regardless of the circumstances, shouldn't she have a right to make that decision for herself? Does it make her a monster? I'm not looking for a particular answer. I'm showing examples of questions that are impossible to ask in a public forum without being framed a monster. This is by design.